EasyJet, you have made some massive inroads in terms of, you know, getting more female pilots into, into the operation. So actually making a conscious choice. Do you want to talk about, about that initiative and why diversity and inclusion is so important to you and, and kind of how it's really shaping the business that you're leading now? Because you've got, what, 14,000 employees roughly at EasyJet? It's, it's a big operation, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it ultimately comes back to two things. One, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a fundamentally commercial, you know, um, angle. And what, what is actually, you know, economically the way you can try to make sure that you become as successful as you can. And I think the notion that if you can let everybody be at their best level, if you can get everybody to express themselves in the most natural way where you can take advantages of those that energy, that passion, that knowledge, that ultimately must be better. Yeah. It, there, there's no way other way of looking at that. And when you look at it, it from that point of view, and then you add on also the dimension of the fact is that, look, if this is going to be run as a team and companies are, are you know, consists of, of teams one way or the other, you must also, you know, recognize that the best outcome is actually by having people in here who has different experiences, they take different views on, on things, but they come together with a common you know, goal in mind. They, they yeah. set themselves up to work towards a common goal outcome, but we come from different perspectives and they contribute in a different way. And, and, uh, and I would have thought that that, that that means that you need to make sure that you, you have a diversity you know, a, a, you know, lens on when you're looking at people who you are sharing you know, uh, your responsibilities with. I, I never thought that, you know, 10 men in the boardroom is, I, I just think that is equally as bad as 10 women in the boardroom. Yeah, I'd I, agree. I, I, I don't think that, you know, for a moment that, uh, that, you know, one should try to look at the way where you got to just move from one thing to another. You got to create, you know, the best possible mix when you're getting most of the experiences from, you know, people in there and you let them be at their best, you let them express themselves so you get the best out of them then you stand a massive chance of actually, you know, creating some huge competitive advantage on that. So I think, and, and, and then also there's something about this that I just think is the right thing to, to do. But I yeah. do think it's more about, I do think it's more about uh, generally less about the, the, the group identity of, of, you know, where you would cluster people, because that mm. in itself can also, you know, put some disadvantages that, well, only because I have been looking to try to get a, you know, a, a group with certain ethnicity in here or from a, you know, uh, whatever background you have or identity you would you would prescribe to a, from a group point of view, you then have to assume that everybody in that group is the same. Well, they're not. Mm. They're not. So so that's why you need to get back to the individuals around this. But the, when you do that as such, you will also then notice when you're putting together that group of five and the ten, that if you're looking at that, you will automatically come into creating a diversity when it comes to the environment and of the thinking. It just follows. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm, I'm not, you know, I used to be a, you know, I used to be pro quotation and, yeah. and I, I'm not anymore. I, I, I think that that is, that is, it, it can work. I should say, if you haven't done any work on this at all, well, yeah. you probably should think about quotation, but it's too late then. But, you know, but I do think that what you need to then, because then you would kickstart this, you would get some debates going, and you, you, you get that going. But I think ultimately, you need to move away from that, that you're creating that diversity through the individuals in there. And you will see that it will represent the better diversity of mix of both gender and whatever, you know, uh, uh, type of characteristics you would, you would call within the group. Um, authenticity as such as well, but also you know having people in a in the you know like myself who hasn't gone to university, I think yeah. that's part of diversity thinking. Um, yeah. You know, instead of having just ten people who just gone to the same schools, best schools in the world, and they come together, well, guess what? They're going to come up with roughly the same ideas of a solution. <laughs> yeah. and, and then then you're ten, you, then you're at least not eight too many people. Yeah, no, you're spot on. And it's interesting. I mean, when you talk about gender diversity, uh, people think it's not about better or worse. Women and men are different. And that's the joy of it, right? <laughs> that's the whole point. It <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> you know? But, but here, here's, here's the point on that. You know, when, when you, you know, yes, there are enough studies and there are enough examples that there are differences between, you say, men and women. 
But the point where I struggle with that is that that will not make any sense for me when I meet an individual from one of the yeah. gender. Because he or she could be completely different. There are different mixes. So the problem, the macro doesn't work out when you bring it yeah. down to the levels of an individual. And no individual, no individual should be prohibited by the by the limitation of the view that I would put on mm -hmm. you being a woman as an example. Yeah. How would yeah. that be fair at all? No. I could yeah, right. tremendous a lot of opportunities in there and, and not make the best come out of yourself as well. So mm -hmm. I think that this is a, it, it's, a, it's a lot of things that is uh, interesting in, in this subject. But ultimately, it's about, you know, look, you're going to get the best out of people. And usually you do that by allowing each and every one to express themselves you know, in the way they feel more comfortable and then really take the advantages of, of their strengths and, and their contributions. Yeah, no, you're spot on. 100% agree with you, Johan. And, and that's it, isn't it? You know, and you've got to cre create that right environment um, for, for that not just to be a view that sits it with you, but also with with all the way through the organization. Right. Yeah. And that that's uh, that's the key. And at EasyJet, you've made you have made big strides um, in, in establishing a culture that I'm sure you're very proud of as well. How would you describe the culture at EasyJet, Johan, under your leadership? Well, I, I think it's uh, it, I think it's something that started, you know, before I was there. You know, I, I think yeah. you know I, I'm you know really proud to be able to, you know, continue and to, to be part of that. But it's an egalitarian company. Mm. It, it's a company where where I think most people would would say that they feel as committed and passionate and engaged um, as as anyone else in there. It, it, it is an egalitarian company. I think that the from the point of view that we do believe that we are an absolute force for good for you know millions and millions and millions of people in Europe that if we weren't around they couldn't live their life in the way that they would do uh, if we weren't there and i've seen so many examples of that you know janet after the the uh, in in the virus where i've yeah. had you know hundreds and hundreds of customers contacting me to say look you got to start get going again because Look, you know, I, 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 I use you as an integrated part of how I live my life to go and see my mom in that city or go, um, you know, and, and do X, Y and, and Z. And easy that is, you know, it's it's the second largest airline in Europe. You know, we yeah. had 100 millions of customers here just just before this 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 happened, uh, close to 100 million. So, you know, on, on a you know annual basis. And, and and I think that, you know, we've been immensely proud that you before we were there, flying was for privileged and, and rich and, and wealthy people. Mm. This was a product and service that wasn't available for, for most people, you know, hardworking families and, and, and students alike. And, and this yeah. is now been something where you can, you know, an average fare is, you know, 60 pounds, um, you know, in, in, in normal times. And um, it's not 150. And I always thought it was great about the company because it gave an experience that was much better than you would attribute it to normal low cost carriers. And mm. the company was digitally advanced quite early on, and and I think that has you know some of the that's some of the core you know foundations about the company. I think we all believe that we do something that is a force for good. Mm.